Okay, uh, I'm going to do mine over EHD, or uh, epizootic hemorrhagic disease, I think is how you pronounce it. Uh, I'm not pre-vet, so kind of limit your questions. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what that means? Get the hard questions out for him. <laughs> oh, you, you have to do it on there. I don't have that set up. I'm not that fancy. Okay, so uh, EHD is a viral disease. Uh, it's mostly found in white-tailed deer and some other ruminants. Uh, it's very similar to the blue tongue disease, and the only way it's spread is by uh, small biting midges uh, found near water sources, and as you can see, they're pretty small. Uh, can be transferred from like animal to animal. Um, as an incubation period uh, of up to one week, and the infected deer, uh, they'll lose their appetite and their fear of humans uh, shortly. Uh, okay, now, so you're saying the deer, which usually are afraid of humans, they lose yeah. their fear of humans. Yeah. Do you know what's the other disease that that's kind of like almost a landmark where a wild animal loses its fear of humans? Rabies. Be aware of that. They just, if a rabbit animal, they lose their fear of humans. I've seen that on film. It's like amazing. A skunk walked right up to a person. Oh, actually, it was a kid in a sandbox and bit the kid. <laughs> what's that? There's one other one where I think it's with mice and. They get infected with it, and then it like triggers them to want to be eaten by a cat. Oh wow! Oh, that's yeah, interesting. I, we might have to hear about that one. Okay, back to Austin here. <laughs> um, they'll develop mouth ulcers. Uh, they get high fever, and it increases their pulse and their respiration rate. Uh, they can get swelling of the face, neck, eyelids, and tongue. And they also suffer from internal internal hemorrhages of uh, the heart, lungs, liver, kidneys, <coughs> and intestines. And the blood supply and the oxygen levels drop, which is where they get the blue tongue disease coming from. And um, deer will die from it. There's no cure for it. Uh, the normal die within 36 hours once the symptoms start. Um, because of the internal hemorrhaging and the high fevers, they'll seek out water sources like creeks, puddles, lakes, ponds, anything like that to try and cool down. Um, very few deer do survive and they develop antibodies, but they are left lame with lesions on their legs and they have real bad hoof problems that most time can't walk. Um, and EHD, since it's from, or that you get it from flies, um, it varies year to year. It's worse in drought years. And like I said, there's no way to stop the disease because you can't stop the control of um, those midges. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was from the 1st of September last year, uh, just a map of Indiana. Um, the disease, the, it, very, it starts in August and then goes until early or late December, like the first freeze. Um, this was, like I said, the first September, and you can see the different counties. The counties in red have more than five cases, and the counties in yellow have less than five cases. I know from personal experience, most of the cases go unreported, because when you find a deer with EHD, you're supposed to contact your uh, local DNR, and depending how, you know, if the DNR <coughs> officer wants to do anything about it, a lot of times they'll just leave it. Um, you, if you find one in the wild, you can't kill it even though you know it's going to die because it is a wild animal. And then um, cattle can get EHD, but it's a much milder case and death losses are, they hardly happen at all. Um, most of your common signs in cattle, um, you get excess saliva, you get stiffness of the joints and the legs, they can develop a fever and they have one of the most telltale signs is they get crusty peeling muzzles. Um, I did some research and I found two cases of EHD in cattle. One was in South Dakota and the other was in, in Nebraska and they were both in 2012. Uh, the veterinarians just treated for um, other infections that can occur from this disease. And from what I understand, uh, most of the cattle came through, no major problems, those pretty small cases. Uh, there's no evidence that humans can get EHD from the midge bites or from eating the meat, but um, secondary infections can infer, or in occur. So you probably should not eat the meat. Okay, so before you move on, okay, yeah, secondary infection. So the, the deer is weakened and it's going to have some other <laughs> disease that prevent you from eating the venison. Did you say, okay, so it's the fly bite, but what yeah. is inside the animal making it sick? Did you say? Did uh, I miss that? I probably didn't say that. Is it a, a bacterium or something? Yeah. Or is it a virus? It's a virus. Yeah, it's a virus. It's a virus, yeah. okay, because I missed that part. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, I had <laughs> So the fly injects a virus into the deer, and the deer are susceptible, but the cattle, for example, are yeah. more resistant. Yeah, and there's a few different variations of the disease. Okay. Most of them are, they just group them all in one category. Okay. 
How about other states? I know you showed Indiana. Is there like one state that's a hotbed? I mean, like um, you, I'm thinking like, okay, Wisconsin have has a lot of deer. Yeah. Would they have more of this? Yeah, uh, your states that have, do have more deer, they do have more problems with this. Like I said, it varies greatly from year to year. Like 2007 okay. was a real bad year. 2012, the year of the drought, was a real terrible year. Um, and in some cases, it can wipe out up to so many deer where the DNR limits hunting and tags and restrictions. Okay, because okay. that's one thing about the environment, and I think you guys notice this, sometimes the weather kind of dictates what insects are prevalent and which ones are not. You know, it's amazing how you're gonna have a certain kind of spring and you know you're gonna get this insect like buckets full and other times not. So in this case, dry conditions yeah. make these guys flourish. Any other comments? Here's one there. Okay, so you said that they produce antibodies. So have they tried to make like a vaccine or anything like that? Or do they, like the one, the vaccine caused the ulcers and everything also? Uh, I'm not real sure. I know they said the deer that do survive, um, they do, they will die. They won't live a full life. They will die um, shortly, or I think they might live another few years. But they won't live a full life like a deer that wasn't infected. Uh, I didn't see any evidence of them trying to um, do anything with the antibodies or anything. Right. The vaccine. That's a good general question because how do you deliver vaccines to wild animals? That's yeah. the big question. And that was another problem because it yeah. does vary from year to year. So some years, you know, it might not be a big problem at all, and then other years it could, you know, get rid of 50% of the deer population right. in an area. Eric Beckler, have you seen it before? Uh, I have. Uh, you'll find, like, dead deer just laying in, like, rivers and creeks, and most of the time they're, you know, just a, half a carcass, you know, they got scavenged by other And how do you know it's this disease versus something else? Um, it's pretty easy. There's not very many other diseases that have that will. I mean, they'll, you find a deer that's just flat out lying in the middle of a river or a creek, and um, a lot of times if there is... Because they were thirsty <coughs> and all that kind of yeah, stuff, too. Yeah, they're real hot. The they'll just, I mean, it, it kills them so quickly. Um, you Sometimes you might find a deer that's just kind of wandering around. You can tell he's just kind of spaced out, doesn't okay. really know where he's at, and he probably will die within a few hours. Okay. Uh, they'll like they'll, they'll have the blue tongue, the tongue is oh, still yeah. there. Okay, that's right. okay. And then you'll see the swelling of the face, stuff okay. like that, and lesions on him. What's the blueness of a tissue called? Cyanotic, cyanosis. The thing about, I want to go back to that, delivering vaccines to wild animals. That's kind of an interesting topic. I thought I read something that there was some place they were putting something in meat, or anybody help me on that? I, I can't remember what animal they were trying to vaccinate, if it was coyotes and rabies vaccine. I don't know, anybody help me on that? I thought, they were, I thought it was cattle for some reason. We talked about it in microbiology. So cattle? Yeah. Well, but I mean, you, you can you kind of control that, and you can, it's pretty easy to give yeah. cattle vaccines. I'm talking about like the wild animals where, I don't know. Well, I know, I don't know if this is what she's talking about or not, but I know they're introducing some stuff out west right now, and it's like, this isn't what you're talking about, but it's like paintball guns. Okay. So like the range line 